Imagine rubbing one off and suddenly waking up into this technicolor dreamland like you just stumbled into a trippy music video. This fool, Kelvin, is standing there blinking instead of looking for clues. His confusion gets a slap of clarity when this mysterious voice drops a menu on him. Turns out, Kelvin's been pouring his heart out to the voice, who goes by the name of Melfina, the goddess of reincarnation. But Kelvin's got tricks up his sleeve making himself look like the lowest tier pet Frank adventure while secretly holding an s rank trump card. Now, the mission. Wrangle these blue slimes. These slimes are like the Kardashians of the mystical world. Elusive, slimy, and surprisingly hard to catch. After the showdown, Kelvin strikes a deal with the slippery slime and dug to Clotho. Clotho's not just a slime. It's a one slime wrecking crew, absorbing and defeated foes like a boss. But hold up, because in this fantasy world, slavery's a thing. There's an elf in a cage. Talk about gentrification gone wrong. Kelvin hits up the end to rub another one off and now he's digging into a meal that's basically the fantasy world's equivalent of Uber Eats. Kelvin's ranking up like he's speed running on YouTube. Here comes Cashel, the D-ranked dreamer, trying to join the Kelvin party. But Cashel is sus and has a dark side, involved in some guild murder. Kelvin's like, get your bitch ass out of here, rejecting Cashel's offer faster than Usain Bolt. Cashel, not taking the L lightly, teams up with Gimbal and Raj. Little do they know, Kelvin's been playing 4D chess while they're stuck in a 2D plotline. The ruined castle showdown, Kelvin's already swiped left on that dungeon, leaving a surprise party for the troll trio. Raj falls for Kelvin's trap. Clotho, Kelvin's slimy sidekick, scares Gimbal with some wind magic. Cashel, thinking he's the boss, faces off with Kelvin and Kelvin wipes the floor with him. Cleaning house like Marie Kondo on a caffeine rush. Pulse chaos. Kelvin stumbles upon Gerard, the ghost boss with a tragic backstory. Gerard's got a heart, but he's got to test Kelvin's vibe. He pulls some Jedi mind tricks, stopping Clotho's attacks. Kelvin, being the OG that he is, binds Gerard again, and Clotho's laser show seals the deal. And with another belt, Kelvin adds Gerard's armor to his drip collection and levels up to D rank. Enter Leo, the guild master. Leo's got this appraisal ability that's basically superhero level, knows all the stats, connections, and probably your incognito search history. Turns out, Leo knows everything, including Kelvin's secret ties to the other world. But when Kelvin throws shade at Leo for not taking action against Cashel, Leo drops the truth bomb. No solid proof fam. Here's the plot twist. Leo spills the tea about heroes from Drama City, also summoned by Melfina. They're the backup squad for Demon Trouble and Leo's got a deal for Kelvin. Save the town, level up, and get mission backup, an all-in-one package deal like Groupon. Next stop, the innkeeper Claire. She spills the beans on heroes being summoned. Kelvin, on a stroll to the market, spots an elf named Eiffel, locked up like Tory Lanes. Kelvin's like, I need her in my life, despite knowing she's a walking fire hazard. He drops a sacred spell, releasing Eiffel from her curse. She gets emotional like it's the end of Infinity War, Claire gives Eiffel a blow-up, and Kelvin rolls up with his crew, Melfina, Clotho, and Gerard, the Ghost Knight. It's a fantasy family reunion. Angie, the guild manager, rolls out the red carpet for Eiffel, and they become BFS practically finishing each other's sentences. But here comes trouble, in the form of third prince Tabura. But Kelvin's not having it. He knocks down the guards with his armament hockey and puts Tabura in his place. Turns out, Tabru has come to recruit Kelvin, but Karma's got jokes. He ends up picking a fight with the very dupe he's there to enlist. Meanwhile, Melfine is doing her spirit thing, giving orders to Colette at the temple. Time for some hero action, but the heroes are moving slower than a grandma on meth, disappointing Melfina and Kelvin. Leo spills the beans about a sealed demon in a secret room dungeon, and Kelvin's the man for the job. Team Kelvin, assemble. They reach the secret room via an underground mine, expecting some demon drama. They find Victor, the demon babysitter, guarding a demon girl named Sierra. Turns out, she's a big deal, daughter of a defeated demon king, potential heir to the throne. But Victor's got a weird plan. He wants to munch on Kelvin to unlock Sierra's potential. He attacks the squad. Kelvin, instead of freaking out, is hyped to face such an impressive opponent. It's Team Kelvin versus Victor and his summoned squad of skeletons. But the skeletons didn't stand a chance. Victor, with his black smoke, tries to pull a fast one, 
but Kelvin summons Clotho, who latches onto Victor's arm like a clingy X, and Eiffel's fire arrow makes Victor say goodbye to one arm. Jaren's upgraded sword slices down the other arm finishing the two-piece with no biscuit. Now Victor, in a pinch, transforms into his final form, one-shotting Jared like it's a boss fight in a video game. Eiffel, Clotho, and Kelvin bring the heat, ending Victor's villainous run. The final attack leaves Victor devastated but he pulls a redemption move, saving Sierra from a falling stone with the last drop of his energy. Kelvin, being the softy behind the adventure exterior fulfills Victor's dying request and breaks the seal. Sierra, now a human thanks to a magic hairpin, plays the part of the victim. Kelvin reports Victor's death, and the town buys it. Sierra steps into town for the first time, wide-eyed like she did shrooms. The town throws a surprise party for Kelvin's promotion, the whole shebang. Sierra, getting into the groove of human life, rocks new gauntlets crafted from Victor's carapace. Gerard's not left out, he scores a fresh sword from the dynamic craftsmanship duo of Kelvin and Eiffel. So, Kelvin's biggest struggle in this new world. No rice. The Kragans hit hard, leading the squad to the coastal city of Torridge, rumored to be the promised land of rice. Melfine is MIA because, you know, she can only possess one of her crew members at a time. On the way, they run into a bandit roadblock who are about 30 to 70 rank. Sierra makes easy work of them, tying them up without breaking a sweat. The bandit leader snitches about their rivals, the Black Storm group, and their mysterious leader Christopher, the champion of Trison Horn. Apparently, Christopher's into some shady kidnapping business. The crew heads to meet Torridge's guild leader, Mist, who's got all the Kelvin deets thanks to Leo. Kelvin lays down the plan, let the Torridge heroes deal with the bandits. Team Kelvin swoops in, freeing captured women and handing bandits their butt cheeks. No time wasted, but hold up, a little dirty ass girl steps up and stops them from attacking Clotho and urges the heroes to help Kelvin against the bandits. The heroes, thinking Christopher and his crew are adventurers, rush in like they're about to join a party. So, Team Kelvin decides to play make-believe as the big bads, the Black Storm. Enter squad heroes, Tuya, Setsuma, Mizuka, and Miyabi. Kelvin, straight up asks them to attack him all at once. Heroes summon spirits, power-ups activated. Setsuma and Tuya jump into a direct battle, causing an explosion. Kelvin, unbothered, steals Miyabi's skills. Tuya gets owned, Setsuma's aid falls flat, and Kelvin just flexes through it all. He throws up a giant wall, but Setsuma slices through it like butter. Mizuka creates an ice wall, Miyabi pulls gravity shenanigans, and Tuya and Setsuma charge at Kelvin. Kelvin, being the strategist, detonates a power move, causing a massive explosion. He drops some fight advice like a sensei, poking Tuya to unleash his special double dagger move. Mizuka freezes Kelvin in a temple, Miyabi summons her minion, and Kelvin's like, meet Golem, my personal bodyguard. He whips up a new spell in just 30 seconds, breaking free. Kelvin goes on an equal right spree, knocking Setsuma, Miyabi, and Mizuka down like bowling pins. Tumia, feeling the heat, takes a hit and learns how to do a backflip. Tuya surrenders, submitting himself taking the L like a chump, I mean a champ. So, the improvised heroes need a boot camp, and Kelvin's the drill surgeon. He pits them against the sea octopus, a squishy nightmare resistant to sharp edges. The team struggles, but with Kelvin's guidance, they conquer the creature. Reality check, they're not ready for the dungeon boss yet. The realization sparks a fire in the heroes to train harder, and Kelvin's all smiles. Meanwhile, Sierra fishes up the dungeon boss, adding more tasks to Kelvin's already packed schedule. The heroes set sail for the western continent, a pendant from Kelvin as their reward. But wait, Kelvin's not done playing hero. He remembers Gerard's enemies on the western continent and asks if the heroes can avenge his family. Gerard, touched by the concern, is ready for some payback. Team Kelvin gets summoned by the Queen of Torridge, thanking them for bandit problem solving. She's in a generous mood, so when Kelvin throws in a joke about rice, she grants him a lifetime supply. A few days later, the Queen joins Kelvin for a meal and drops an unexpected bomb, either give her Eiffel for her cooking skills or move into the castle with her. Kelvin, sensing her riz, gracefully declines both offers. The Queen, being chill, Let's them use the teleportation gate. Back in the city, Kelvin goes big and buys a house for his crew. But the real highlight is Kelvin finally summons the goddess of reincarnation, Melfina, in the flesh. Mixed feelings hit Kelvin, but Melfina drops some truth bombs about his previous love life, 
leaving him confused, embarrassed, and wanting to rub another one off. The team gathers around for the first breakfast as a crew, but Melfina bursts into the scene, dropping bombs like Funk Master Flex. First move, she claims the wifey title, leaving Kelvin blushing like he got caught rubbing one off. She hits Kelvin with not one but two blessings, like she's Oprah on a magical giveaway spree. First up, immunity to one lethal attack every month. Basically, Kelvin gets a monthly note card to dodge danger. And then, the power to summon heroes from another world. Now, the love triangle turns into a supernatural smackdown. Demonic Claws versus Divine Spears. Think of it as a fantasy UFC match with Gerard and Yuki playing spectator in the background. The clash ends in a tie, and the only conclusion is them jumping into conclusions. To clear Kelvin's foggy thoughts, Melfina dives into the deep lore of Demon Waves and the Demon King. Apparently, our Demon Pals are leveling up, and the only solution. Summon heroes from another world. Two ways to do it. Teleport the living or reincarnate the departed. Kelvin, in his quest for fairness, taps into his magical mojo and goes for the reincarnation option. But plot twist, the powerful hero he summons isn't some battle-hardened warrior, but a kid named Leon Saki. Surprise! She used to be terminally ill in her past life and thanks Kelvin for a second chance at living. Kelvin, with his signature flair, rebrands her as Rian, dissing some disgusting Leo vibes. And to keep things spicy, they spin a tale that Rian is Kelvin's little sister. The crew, maids and all, hit the dungeon woods for a skill-up extravaganza. Their XP gets spread like confetti, reaching even Ellie and Yuka. They are leveling up the squad one monster at a time. Eiffel's evil eyes spot trouble. Allot and his squad are rolling in thinking they're gonna grind levels, but Team Kelvin left the dungeon mobs in the dust. Kelvin drops a casual apology. Sorry, not sorry. Town time kicks in, and Rhea and Clotho get their wolf a spa day, officially naming it Alex. 14 a rank fighters roll up, thinking they're gonna take down the warrior who handed Christopher an L. These bandits rep Trison territory, and now they're all about working for the glory of Trison. Kelvin's like, hold my beer, and asks Rion to handle them. It's a test of Alex and Rion's teamwork, and, even as a trainee, Rion's skills are OP. Kelvin and Sierra mop up the rest of the bandits like a school janitor. Now, switch to Trison, where King Jader's having a roundtable chat with his generals. They've cleared their Christopher motive, but the other three states ain't feeling the love. Some want to go full-on war mode, thanks to General Tristan and Prince Oscar, but not everyone's vibing with that. General Dan and Princess Stula are like, no, nope, it's not the right time. But here comes the wild card, General Clive, and nobody's really feeling him. The squad is rolling deep into the forest of heraldry on King Leonhard's orders, and they protect that elf village from some mystery S-ranked beast. This ain't your regular quest. It's an s rank test for Kelvin, and you need a ruler's green light. In Kelvin's case, King Leonhard is the VIP stamp. Leo, the man with the political info, talks about Trison's pulse bandit chaos and the army making moves at the border. War drums are beating like 808s. Elves at the entrance try to block our adventures, but Kelvin's got that royal permission slip. Milas, the elf boss, takes a double take at Eiffel. Turns out she's a doppelganger for Luniel, the brave elf who once pulled a sacrifice move with a dragon king to save her crew. Luniel went MIA, and now there's some elf family drama unfolding. There's a chance Luniel is Eiffel's mom, but the Dragon King can't be the dad cause Eiffel's a half-elf. Monsters are pulling organized hiss on the village, aiming for a good old elf nap. Kelvin sets up a trap for the Magneto Cyclops looking ops. Arrow towers pop up, Melfina's green fog wraps the village like a mystical burial. Team Kelvin's ready for action. Trison's soldiers roll in thinking they're top dogs. Spoiler alert, they're not. The commander pulls out an S-ranked giant beast, danger level, high. But Rian, the pint-sized powerhouse, steps up to take down the beast. But then, Thunderstrike happens. Rian and Alex, her wolf sidekick, unleash a combo move that knocks the beast down even in his final form. General Clive, the wild card in this fantasy deck, rolls in with his harem for a sneak attack. Clive pulls out the helix shield. It turns out Clive's got some serious riz. His lady squad is on Kelvin like he's the last man on earth. Kelvin, being the strategic mistro, instructs his golems to one-shot the ladies so he can break that seduction spell. The battlefield turns into a spectacle, spells clashing, sword slashing, and a high-speed chase. Shield meets Dark Staff, and an explosion happens. 
Cliff's face gets a special surprise like Kelvin put it there. If you know what I mean, Clive pulls out the big guns, S-rank magic, a cyclone of chaos. Kelvin, not one to back down, counters with the black staff of disaster. The dust settles and guess who's standing tall? Kelvin. Clive's legs? Clearly he doesn't need them anymore. But hold on, enter Tristan, Chimera army general for the last minute save. But don't be fooled. Tristan's version of a save involves some crazy experimentation. Clad dying isn't even on the menu. Villagers sensing a victory feast prep a banquet for Kelvin, the day's savior. Melfina, Sierra, and Rian get into a marathon to reach Kelvin first. It's time to pop those celebration potions cause Kelvin is about to rub out a big one.